What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Paul Thaddeus Forte here. We're on the Los Angeles Mission Campus for Real Bible Talk Q&A on campus. Today, we are talking about the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many people don't understand what the gospel is. They know all that Jesus died on a cross, but what he died on a cross for? You know, first of all, gospel means good news. It's the good news that we're trying to share with everybody on campus. And that good news is that Jesus died for you. But for what? You know, as there, there are physical laws that govern the physical universe, there are also spiritual laws that govern man's hearts. A uh, physical law is like the, the, uh, the traffic law. Red light, green light, yellow light. You know, when you come to a red light, you need to stop. But what happens if you drive through a red light? You can get into a serious accident thus causing damage to yourself and to the person that you got into the accident with. So we know that that red light is there to protect, that law is there to protect, but it's also a fair law because if you wait at that stop sign, at that red light, just a few minutes later, you're gonna get a green light and you'll be able to go. So everybody has an equal opportunity to get to where they need to go. So we understand that those traffic laws are set to protect and to be fair to other people. There's also the, the uh, spiritual law, which is the Ten Commandments. Uh, the Ten Commandments are laws from God that help to protect humanity. Uh, the Ten Commandments consist of two things, loving God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and loving your neighbor as yourself. Within the Ten Commandments, we see how to do that. And oftentimes, when we're trying to share the gospel with somebody, we want to help them to see their need for Jesus and what he did at the cross. So one thing that Ray Comfort uses is something called the way of the master, and I absolutely love it. Because you come to a person and you ask them a question, do you consider yourself to be a good person? Oftentimes people will say, yes, I'm pretty good. You know, I do my homework, I take care of the poor whenever I see them. But then you say, can I put you to the test? You know, and you use the test in a lot of the Ten Commandments. First question is, have you ever told them a lie before? I think that all of us have told a lie once or twice in our lives. So what do you call someone that tells a lie? A liar. Have you ever stolen something before? It could be anything from great value to a simple uh, pen. <laughs> um, say, well, yes, I have stolen something before. What do you call someone that steals something? A thief. So by your own admission, you're a lying, thieving at heart. You know, if you ever looked at someone with lust that was not your husband or your wife, that's adultery. Call that person an adulterer. So by their own admission, they admit to being a lying, thieving adulterer at heart. And if God was to judge them based on whether they kept the law, the Ten Commandments, or not, would they be innocent or guilty? The answer is, we're all guilty. You know, the Bible says that the wages of sin, of breaking the law, is death. And that's the reason why humanity is dying. That's why we get old and we die by death and disease because we have those natural laws. So we're guilty of breaking those laws. What will we receive when we die? Heaven or hell? Based on keeping those laws that govern every man's heart. Well, we have to be honest, that would probably be hell. And if that concerns you, then there's good news for you. This is where the good news comes in. Over 2,000 years ago, God sent his only begotten son to die on the cross for humanity, to pay that penalty of sin. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. So let's say that we're in a courtroom scenario. You're standing before the judge. You admit it to breaking the law, and the judge gives you two options. The judge says you could either pay the fine, which is a billion dollars, or you're going away for eternity. What would be your response? Do you have the billion dollars to pay? I know I don't. So my response would be, Judge, I don't have the billion dollars. I can't pay that debt. But before, so the judge would have to send me away. But imagine that the judge is about to hit the gavel, that they're about to take you and throw you into jail for the rest of your life. And then all of a sudden, instead of the judge hitting the gavel, the judge stands up, he takes off his robe, steps down to where you are, pulls out a checkbook and writes you a check for a billion dollars, rips out the check, hands it to you in your name, gets back on the stand, puts on his robe and says, so what is your option? Well, now you have the option to pay so you can get out of being 
spending eternity in hell. You know what I'm saying? But how did you have that means of doing that? Somebody provided that billion dollars for you. They paid your fine for you so that you would not have to suffer. That's what Jesus Christ did when he died on the cross. He paid our fine so that we would not have to suffer the consequences of our sin. So here's the thing. You put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ today and you follow him, repent of your sins, then when you die from this physical body, you will not remain dead, but you will rise again. You will have eternal life. What is the result? How do we know that this is true? Because Jesus Christ himself died on the cross for our sins. And how do we know that the penalty of sin was, was paid for? He rose again on the third day. That means that death no longer has power over us when we accept that gift of God, which is Jesus Christ, who paid that price on the cross for our sin. So the question is, will you do that today? Will you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Do you believe in what he did at the cross? John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. That's what Jesus did. And the Bible also says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He paid that penalty for us. Will you accept Jesus Christ in your heart today? Will you accept the payment for sin? Will you follow him? That's a question that only you can answer. But if you will, then I will say to you, welcome to the family of God. This is your boy, Paul Thaddeus Forte, once again, on the Los Angeles Mission College campus. We're doing evangelical work here. Pray for us, and we hope to see you next time. All right? Peace.